Hello! People have said I should make videos for a while, so I'm finally doing it. You're very welcome. Obviously, there's a whole self-isolation thing happening right now, so I don't have college for two weeks. And I need something to do, so it seemed like a good opportunity to give this a try. I don't know how often I'll make videos. This could be the only one I make for all I know. The obvious thing for me to do is to bake something, because that's my thing. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in my first video because it seemed like a big commitment. So instead of thinking of it like that, this is just kind of me testing things. So I just made something and recorded the process. And what you're about to see is the product of that. If I make more videos, I'll probably mess around a lot more with how I do things because I don't really have ideas. I just want to figure it out and have fun and whatever. For now, this is something, and for what it's worth, tell me what you think, I guess. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the kitchen. I don't really have a great specific thing in mind for how this is going to work. I'm just going to try and make something and record it and shamble together a video <laughs> I'm gonna make Ferrero Rocher cupcakes because that's a thing I've been wanting to try for a while. It seems like a good idea. So I don't know how instructional this is gonna be because it's not something I've made before. I'm just gonna record how it goes. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'll try and be semi-instructional. The original recipe for the cupcakes was written in cups, so I have it in grams in the description and a link to the original because I don't need to rewrite the instructions. Welcome to the voiceover. First of all, you're going to want to unwrap 12 Ferrero Rocher and put them in the freezer. These are going to be going in the center of the cupcakes and you want them to hold up in the oven because they're kind of fragile. As you go to put them in the freezer, find the base of a cheesecake that you never finished. Take this out and put the Ferreros in. Next, see if you can take the cheesecake base out of the tin in one piece. And the answer is yes, you can. And then chow down. It tastes like shortbread, probably on account of the fact that it's made of crushed up shortbread fingers and butter. Obviously this means that it tastes good, but don't eat the entire thing because you just remembered you're recording a video right now. This was going to be the bottom of a strawberry cheesecake. There it goes. Because we were having a bake sale to raise money for Rag Week, which we didn't get at the same time as everyone else. It was a whole thing. And we're not having it at all anyway because of the whole quarantine thing. So it doesn't really matter that I didn't make it in the end and I did make other stuff, so it's fine. Next, you want to put the flour, sugar, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt into a bowl. Whisk them together until they're combined. In another bowl, combine the oil, the buttermilk, and the vanilla. Crack an egg one-handed, you show off. I hope that nobody notices that a tiny piece of shell got on the paddle of your stand mixer. Beat everything together on a medium speed until they're all combined. The original recipe actually says using an electric mixer, which I think is just like the electric hand whisk. So obviously you can use that, but I'm using the sand mixer because it's just convenient. So add the dry ingredients about a third at a time to the wet. Be sure to start mixing them at either a low speed or by hand at first, or you're going to get flour everywhere. Eventually you should end up with a batter that looks something like this. I don't think I've ever made a cupcake batter with just oil and no butter before so i'm not used to how it feels it's very like i don't want to say oily like oily oily but like <laughs> oily <laughs> line your cupcake pan with cases of your choosing i went with golden ones because it seemed like the obvious choice finally free the frigid ferreros from the freezer and get ready to fill the cases when you fill the cases you want to put about a spoonful of batter in first plonk a ferrero in and then cover it in more batter once you've done this, you're ready to put them in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. The outside of the tins is very greasy and oily and gross. I don't know why. Last time I used these cases, I remember the same thing happening, so... It could be those, I don't know. You can see on some of them, you can see the Ferrero Rocher on the inside which doesn't matter because there's going to be icing on top, so you won't see it. I will make the icing soon, but I haven't had proper food yet today, so I'm going to do that first. 
After wiping some of the greasy residue from the bottom of the cupcakes, the next step is to make burritos. This video isn't a burrito tutorial, it's barely a cupcake tutorial. I don't really know what you would qualify this as, but it's an ASMR video now too, so... I don't know as much about cooking as I do about baking, but as far as I'm concerned, these are good. And with that, your mid cupcake burritos are complete. Once you've made your burritos and eaten them, you can finally move on to the frosting unless you forget you have icing to make and you fall asleep. I forgot that I had icing to make last night and I fell asleep, so I'm gonna do it now. Put the butter, which should be room temperature, into the stand mixer and beat it on a high speed until it's fluffy. After that, start putting in icing sugar. So in most cases with frosting recipes, the amount is going to be like close enough to 500 grams that if you just buy a 500 gram bag and like put it in till it looks right, you're probably going to get there with no problems. That's what I normally do. After you put in the icing sugar, take the Nutella and just kind of be mesmerized by it for a while. Watch the way it ribbons down and how shiny it is, and then add it to the icing. Beat it until the frosting is done. Also, the recipe said to add vanilla and salt and I didn't because I forgot. Now that your icing is made, it's time to move on to decorating. Put an icing tip of your choosing in the bottom of a piping bag and then fill it up with your frosting. Sometimes to get all the icing to the bottom of the bag, you have to shake it vigorously and put it against the table and squeeze it down like a tube of toothpaste that's almost empty. But once it's in there, twist the top off and then you're ready to start piping things. I just kind of did an elegant little tower and then took the brown part off of Ferrero and then popped it on top. Do that to all 12 of them and then they're done. They're done. They look good. I'll try one later because I ate a lot of icing and the burritos. So I'm not in a state to eat a cupcake. The way they look is pretty good. I'm like half tempted to put some kind of sprinkles or chopped nuts or something on them just to make them even prettier, but I don't want to go overkill and ruin them because right now they look really good. I'll insert a clip of when I try one of these here Yeah, that's everything. I don't have anything else to say. I'm kind of just talking to fill the silence at this point, so I'm done. Thank you for watching this thing. If I make another one, I'll see you then. Otherwise, that's that. I might make more. I'd like to make more, I think. It kind of depends on how this turns out, because I don't know if it's going to even look good. I don't know. I don't know. If you have ideas for things I could do or make or whatever, let me know, because I really enjoy that and I shall see you around, so...